So we are going to start the session. I request all the uh, guest and keynote speakers requested to switch on your video because we are going to live stream our uh, official Facebook page. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to all. A very warm welcome and greetings of the hour to all of our revered members of Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. Welcome back to yet another virtual grand summit on peace. I, Dr. S. Nagarajan, Principal of Surendra Institute of Engineering and Management, Siliguri, West Bengal, and Deputy Director of Metex CWSIR, invite you all to join for the prayer come virtual lighting of LAMP to formally inaugurate the world's greatest virtual summit on peace. Thank you. Uh, let me start uh, by introducing our uh, CWSIR, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research, founded by Dr. Smita Tiwari in 2019 and under the able presidentship of uh, Dr. Abhishek Pandey. A vision for promoting research and innovation and targets the mission to strengthen the society with enlightened intellect and wisdom through the specific ideology from the specialized field. CWSAR is a stanch belief that research, creativity, and innovation can only guide the entire fraternity of education to a destiny that can produce good literature, research scholars, national and international patents, a wider perspective to develop and implement feasible definition of living in peace. Believing in team and collaborative work, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research pays heartfelt gratitude to its executive members, state country coordinators, country amb ambassadors, board of directors, and secretariat and all other governing bodies. And World Peace Summit aims to inspire youth to sharpen skills of peace, education, global citizenship, amplifying voices of youth, uh, women, peace and security, facilitate the exchange of ideas and scholars talk. Climate actions for peace and new network to form the like-minded individuals and world leaders. This summit will provide an opportunity to students and young leaders to bring solutions and projects by participation in different peace sessions, talks, and activities with international, uh, international delegates and speakers. World Peace Summit 2021 will foster mutual understanding and harness capacity building of like-minded people, social harmony, exposure, and ideation create new impact. It also aims to engage young people in conflict resolution, amplify their voice for social justice and create a harmonic, harmonious environment among communities and society. With that, you know, let's move on uh, to introducing our uh, guest of uh, honors, chief guest and special guest and keynote speakers of uh, uh, today's session. This, uh, we are going to have four day session. Today is the first session of our uh, World Peace uh, Summit. This is an immense pleasure to announce the world, world's best brains of chief guest, guest of honor and keynote speakers in this virtual uh, event organized by uh, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. We feel so blessed to listen to the talk of history creators in the context of peace in this grand global summit. It is really a great to be witnessing the enlightening bringing wisdom and an iconic talent together. Let me first invite uh, uh, 
the special guest of uh, today's evening, Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, legendary educationist uh, India. He is a visionary icon of value-based education in Mayuti, India for more than 50 years. Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, a visionary and a far-sighted person, has been building bridges of peace across the globe for nearly 50 years. For his long-standing contributions to education in peace, the United Nations awarded the prestigious UNESCO Prize for uh, Peace Education in the year 2002 to his uh, creation, the City Montessori School, popularly uh, known as uh, CMS, which Gandhi founded in 1959 and has been serving as its founder manager. With this small introduction, now I invite uh, uh, Dr. Jagadish Gandhi to deliver his inaugural speech. Sir, over to you. Dear friends, I organized a conference in London about 46 years back on the issue of world peace through education. In fact, education is the vehicle by which we can create world peace. Because whatever the seeds we are sowing in the small minds, in the receptive minds of the children, what the children are listening with the two ears and watching with the two eyes. So audio and visual, what is going into the minds of the children, that makes him what the kind of person you want to create. If we want to create peace in the minds of the children, it has to be, we have to start with the children. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And Mahatma Gandhi said, if we are to teach the real peace in this world, if we are to carry on a real war against war, we shall have to begin with the children. It is with the children that we can bring about a change. What is education? Education is a continuous and a creative process. Its aim is to develop the capacities latent in human nature and to coordinate their expression for the enrichment and progress of society by equipping children with material, human, and divine knowledge. Man has three realities of life. Man is a material being, man is a human being, man is a divine being. He needs a balanced education of all the three realities of life. Dear friends, true education, religious capacities, which are hidden in the nature of a man. The true education, religious capacities, develops analytical abilities, confidence in oneself, willpower, and goal-setting competency, and instills the vision that will enable him to become a self-motivated agent of social transformation. Paulo Ferry says, education changes the people, and people change the world. If we want to bring about a change in the world, we want to create peace in the world, we have to start with the unity, because peace is a byproduct of unity. And unity requires two things, a common concern and a binding thread. For example, the 2.5 billion children of the world, who are the one third of the total population of 7.5 billion people of the world. So the future of over 2.5 billion children of the world and the generations yet to be born has become progressively more insecure and unprotected during past seven decades since the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the recent spread of international terrorism, global warming, and environmental degradation, stockpiling of arms and ammunition, and ever-increasing expenditure on military research and fear of a third world war and a nuclear holocaust. So the, the world is facing the problem of total annihilation of the world. So now this is a need to bring about peace. But peace is, a, peace is the product of, peace can be brought about only through unity. The first thing that is required is unity. And unity requires two things, a common denominator and a binding thread. For example, 2.5 billion children of the world and the generations 
yet to be born are the common concern for all the all the nations of the world they are the common concern and their future is at stake what is going to be the future of these small children and the children who are yet to be born who have not taken birth yet but the future of those children is at stake so this can be possible only through a a binding threat and what is the binding threat the world parliament is the only binding threat which mahatma gandhi said that the nations of the world free nations of the world should form a world parliament pandit nehru said either the world will unite or it will perish ye <clears throat> pani garam bagal and uh, um, winston churchill prime minister of england said the same thing so is the uh, garvachov the president of ussr said the same thing that like we must create world uh, a world law and a world parliament to save this world because the world will not be saved if we want peace we need unity you know the european union came into being and because of the european union there is uh, came unity in the european countries they fought the second war they, they fought the heinous he, most heinous uh, war in the 50s and you know the 20th century was made most brutal and murderous on humanity and because of the fact that the prime minister of france called a meeting of 76 members of parliament of prominent countries the some prominent members of the parliament and because of that he decided to have a european union and a european parliament so europe union european union came into being european parliament came into being european court of human rights and justice was made and euro currency of 19 countries was made because of these things that there is in from the 1950 till today it has 70 years have passed there has been no war in europe there is no european war thereafter and dear friends so we have to unite they brought unity and because of unity peace came in the european region and because of the peace the there was unity and peace and peace is the cause of all prosperity europe became prosperous you can uh, this is this is amply proof that euro currency is the most powerful currency nowadays so this shows that the euro currency is the most powerful now if we want peace we need unity and unity of the world is the requirement of the day because if the world is not united there is going to be a nuclear holocaust the things are moving in that direction so many countries are stockpiling arms on ammunition of mass destruction so dear friends we need to uh, unite the world and uh, to unite the world we have some uh, person should come out take initiative like the woodrow wilson took the initiative after the first world war in 1919 and called a meeting of 42 countries participated in that meeting and he formed the league of nations because of the league of nations there has been no war for 20 more 20 years and there came peace and in 1938 again the second world second world war started it continued up to 1945 in 1945 there was another president of america who was franklin d roosevelt he called a meeting of world leaders only 51 countries participated and he formed the united nations and it came into being on 24th of october 1950 and since then 70 Five years have passed. There has been no war. So, dear friends, what is needed is the unity of 
uh, like the uh, Woodrow Wilson, took the initiative. We are trying our best to approach the Prime Minister Modi to call a meeting of the world leaders. He has just on 30th of June, he said in the NDA meeting that India is going to take a lead in the coming up, the new, new world order. The new world order based on law has to come and that is the only solution. And thereafter, after a week, he had a call. With, he, he called Joe Biden, the president, newly elected president of America. And he said, okay, now the world requires a, <clears throat> a global order based on law and justice. And Joy said, Joy uh, Biden said, yes, I agree to that. And they both have agreed for that. So they both should come out and they should have a meeting either in uh, Washington DC or in Delhi. Either jointly they can invite the presidents and prime ministers of the whole world or they can individually Modi ji invite or Biden invite. So anybody should take an initiative like that of the Woodrow Wilson took the initiative and formed the League of Nations like that of the Franklin D. Roosevelt called a meeting and because of that meeting, 51 countries came forward. They signed a charter of the United Nations. The United Nations came into being for 75 years. There has been no war and there has been peace. And so is the European Union. So for 70 years, there has been no war in Europe. So these are the things we have amply clear that if we unite, the peace will come. The world requires unity. India has two things. One is the philosophy of India, that is of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The whole earth is but one family. And another is, is the Article 51 of the Constitution of India, which says the state shall endeavor to promote international peace and security, maintain just and honorable relations between nations, first of respect for international law and encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration. So now the time has come to realize the mission of Vasudeva Kutumbakam or Jai Jagat and uh, call a meeting of the world leaders so that uh, we can have a world parliament. And this, if there is a world parliament, there will be a world government. If there is a world government, there will be world court of justice. And if the three institutions are there, Settlement of disputes will become easier because so many countries fight with each other. So this is possible. So peace is the byproduct of unity. So that is what is required is the unity. With these words, I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say a few words to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jagadish Gandhi for your wonderful uh, inaugural speech. The next speaker of uh, the session is uh, Mr. John N. Kalaras, founder of Ariston uh, USA. Professor at uh, Keller Graduate School of Management in Chicago, USA for 41 years. In uh, 1999, UNESCO recognized uh, Dr. Kalaras as the Professor of the Year. Between the years 2005 and 2009, he served on the President's Business Advisory Council under President George W. Bush responsible for educational and training. At the global Plato, he has assisted 12 countries in implementing effective systems that lead to operational excellence. At the national Plato, he has trained dozens of 500 fortune companies with thousands of employees, has authored eight business books, all are on as Amazon uh, under his name, authored 50 business programs that enhance efficiency effectiveness and productivity. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you, sir. Over to you. Over to you, Dr. Uh, Mr. John N. Kalaras. Kindly unmute yourself, sir. There you go. Thank you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to all participants. 
Thank you for inviting me. I consider it a great honor to be part of your organization and attempt to contribute with my little knowledge to some degree to your organization. I thank Dr. Gandhi and there is a tough act to follow after all the beautiful things that you said. I realize we are pressed for time, so I will only outline as a first run the points that I would like to make for this organization, for this presentation today. I will begin just like Dr. Gandhi did with education, but I will extend it to training and also literacy. People do not know how to read and write around the world. We need to improve literacy. Next, we need to eliminate poverty. Third, we need to eliminate child exploitation. Fourth, we need to bring gender equality. Fifth, we need climate change, climate control. Sixth, and Dr. Gandhi referred to it, we need arm control cells and nuclear proliferation. Seventh, we need true leaders. We need to elect people who uh, exhibit true leadership in the world. Unfortunately enough, the world suffers from the type of people that we have elected and the people suffer the consequences. Many have said, well, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to vote. Let me remind everybody that the greatest politician of all times, Pericles the Athenian said, we consider those who do not take part in politics, not as someone who minds his own business, but as a useless one. So participating is important. Cultural integration will be my eighth point. Religious freedom will be the ninth. Clear water for people around the world will be number 10. Innovation and creativity will be 11. Partnering our schools from grammar school, high school and universities with businesses. We prepare people to go into business and they don't partner in advance. Uh, in addition, I would also promote innovation and creativity and try to eliminate corruption that exists around the world. Let's, I only have one and a half more minute. So let me just close by saying there are organizations and one of them, the UN has invited me to give a presentation next year in Europe. And I will, on the topic that you're talking about right now, as part of that presentation that I'm preparing for them, the one thing that I will stress is that, yes, we do have the World Trade Organization. We do have the World Health Organization. We do have the UN Nations, the United Nations, and all of them are trying to help education, eliminate poverty and everything else. However, they are not doing it effectively and as, and as efficiently as they should have. In closing, I would say that improve school conditions, build schools. When you build a school, a prison closes. Bring food to schools, make accessible. You, you have no, you in India and many other parts of the world, I come originally from Greece. I know what it takes to go to school and how many kilometers you need to walk sometimes every day in bad weather conditions to go to school and that's not fair. People go to school hungry. And with that, I'm gonna close my presentation because A, my time is up and B, I respect that other sp distinguished speakers will uh, follow. So thank you again for inviting me and I hope that I contributed to the improvement of your organization. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, uh, Mr. John and Kalaris, uh, for your uh, wonderful uh, speech of uh, today's World Peace Summit. And before moving on to the next speaker, I would like to introduce uh, the president and uh, chairman of uh, CWSIR, Dr. Abhishek Pandey, to the forum. Dr. Abhishek Pandey, uh, you can say a few words to the uh, panelists over here, then we'll move on to the next speaker. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you very much, all of you. 
for first of all for accepting the kind invitation from greetings a great charles walter society for innovation research wsir i am very thankful to dr jagadish gandhi is the founder of uh, uh, cms city montessori school is a big chain of school in india secondly i would like to be very 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 thankful to prof john and kalaras he is today speaker but he is uh, a kind of my mentor a kind of my guru my inspiration influence and uh, i'm very thankful to chok ravinder director of punjab university chandigarh thankful to each one of you all today uh, presenting your part and trying to bring peace on the planet thank you so much for being with us thank you very much now i invite uh, the next speaker uh, dr ahmed ar abadat educationist malaysia he is an assistant professor post graduate center management and uh, science university malaysia he is a visiting professor and external examiner in uh, madan academy of tourism he holds a doctoral degree in hospitality management from university saints malaysia he worked as an assistant professor among applied university college among jordan and senior lecturer and research coordinator in the school of hospitality and creative arts management and science university salangor malaysia and worked as a researcher at sustainable tourism research uh, cluster malaysia he was working for the jordanian hospitality industry for 70 years on behalf of cwsir i wholeheartedly invite you to ignite the minds with your speech sir over to you Uh, thank you so much, Prof, for your intro nice introduction. Thank you, everybody, for uh, being with us today. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, and uh, thanks so much to Professor Gandhi, Professor John, for your uh, nice uh, talk. Uh, please allow me to share uh, with you a few slides. Uh, as a part of tourism industry and hospitality, I will take you for a, a small virtual tour for five minutes. Uh, this is the time I got from the committee to to take you. far away from uh, the places you are having there okay so uh, just i will be sharing my small slide uh, i will be all talking about uh, tourism as a global peace uh, industry and um, yes the uh, uh, the peace uh, is one of the uh, sdgs uh, number 16 actually from the sustainable uh, development goal for the un Uh, the peace justice and the strong institution so what about the tourism and the peace is the concept is not uh, like not is uh, not a new uh, invention it's a way of promoting a peace and mutual understanding it's the good practice uh, contributing to the conflict resolution creation of intellectual understanding and building culture and the global jo uh, social justice uh, what about the tourism also and the peace building culture it came in the three perspective which are the personal dimensions the social dimension and the environmental dimension uh, peace tourism mainly focus on environment quality economic development and the community uh, nourishment uh, effort and it is the this course of uh, being shifted from the tourism as a peacemaker to tourism as a peace keeper um peace as a passport of uh, Uh, tourism is a passport to peace where uh, it's a pl playing a, a vital role in building the peace by empowering and community engagement uh, however tourism bring people also together and open people mind uh, without tourism we will never understand each other we will never understand the other we will never having the peace Uh, among each other it's a promoting the peace where ever the local community involvement sustainable development economic growth and the providing the socio cultural benefit and responsible practices of the uh, tourism uh, also it's a conflict resolution while it had a significant role in the mitigation of diverse conflict uh, be it social and cultural and political uh, economics uh, it's also been used as an instrument for restoration of the peace and stability in the politically oriented conflict it help also in restoration of the peace and stability in different strife torn setting across the world so thank you so much for being with me in this virtual tour thank you so much and i will be back the mic to you prof
Thank you so much, sir. Next, I would like to invite uh, Pooja, Talasara, Badari, Edupranath, Singapore to share his views and experience on peace. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, namaste, Bajur. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be on this platform and hearing uh, all of you. So I'm going to share peace from the perspective uh, of my career journey as a human resources and now as a coach. So I'm going to weave um, uh, the story around what I have experienced these as. So I'm going to start with a small story. And uh, so there was a king and king wanted to know that how does the piece look like? So he invited all the painters and he said like, paint for me, how does the piece look like? So all the painters got in the task because obviously uh, the king had uh, announced that whoever is going to come up with a picture which is going to depict peace is going to get an award and all the painters were on the task. Now one of the painting was with the beautiful mountains, the perfect, the perfect scenic and the other painting was not, uh, you know, the cloud was like, it was looking like the sky is angry, the mountains were bare and there was nothing perfect in that picture. And finally, when the king announced, it was the other painting which was then announced as a winner. And everyone started wondering like, why the other painting? So people were very curious. And when they went closer, they saw that there was a, a bush which was coming out from the, uh, from the crack of the rock. And there was a bird which was laying the nest there. So what is peace according to me is there can be a lot of unsettling things around us, but how aligned are we internally is the definition of peace. There can be many external war, but I think the one battle which all of us struggle is the battle within us. Many of times, you know, I wonder like why when a person departs, we say like rest in peace. It's probably because that's the only time when a person tunes in and when the person is more aligned within themselves. So I'll take a couple of more minutes uh, and I would want to say that when I was decoding and trying to demystify a piece, I think we need to uh, take care of three touch points, thoughts, feelings, and actions. So peace is going to be reflected if we take care of all those three touch points. And how do we go about achieving it? If you look at the word peace, the P in the peace, it stands for being present in the moment. It's so important to be present in the moment. E, continuously, we, all of us have a purpose which energizes us. So we need to know what is the purpose which is going to energize us. Adversity, A, like what are the adversity is going to be there? How well are you going to hold the ground? Because the piece is more of internal work here in the mindset, in our thoughts, and feelings. C, it is the consistency. And E, thereafter, it expands. And education provides a link to the, uh, to the peace. Last, I want to say the power to peace is when we are present in the moment, when we take ownership, and we are we raise about the uh, trap of comparing, complaining, criticizing. Because I think that's the trap, you know, which takes away the, man, the mental peace. E, continuously evolve and last reflecting and redirecting on the things which are not working. So thank you once again. I really enjoyed and was an honor to be on this platform. Thank you for your kind generosity of listening to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful speech. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Professor uh, Charter Prabhi Industry, Director of Punjab University, Regional Campus, Louisiana, India. Sir is a member of uh, uh, undergraduate board of studies, faculty of commerce, Punjab University, Chandigarh from uh, 2013 to 2015. And he's a member of syllabus committee, Punjab State Cooperative Agricultural Development Frank, uh, Bank Training Center, Chandigarh. And he is a member working group for uh, certified uh, professional bankers in cooperative course, Center for Professional Excellence in Cooperative Bankers, Institute of uh, Rural Development, and he has been awarded uh, the Best Teacher Award by Lions Club, Ludhiana in September uh, 2010. Now, I, uh, now I invite uh, Dr. Uh, Chandak Ravi Indra Singh, 
to felicitate the session with this wonderful speech. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Mr. Nagarajan. Uh, and uh, before I proceed ahead uh, with my speech, I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Abhishek Pandey, the president of the Charles Walter Society, uh, for giving me this opportunity of getting associated with this uh, wonderful event. And uh, I must appreciate uh, the whole team of this Charles Walter Society. Uh, for selecting this, uh, you know, a very, you know, nice thing for this World Summit. And, uh, you know, as you know, uh, they have put in a network of uh, intellectual people from around the world. It is an excellent job they are doing. Uh, you know, uh, today, uh, uh, we know we all have gathered here uh, to talk about this, uh, you know, topic, world peace. And I would like to start uh, my talk in this way, uh, you know, ever since I gained the consciousness on this planet, I have been told and I have been reading it also that, you know, man is a social animal. And uh, what I see when I look around, uh, I feel that man is not a social animal. It's actually a wild animal. And maybe uh, uh, if you don't, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, feel unhappy about it. I feel that man is, you know, even uh, more wilder uh, than, than the, you know, wild animals living in the forest. When we look around, uh, we read the newspapers, we, you know, listen to the news, uh, you know, appearing in the news channels. We see that uh, man is killing uh, man. And uh, the, the scale with which, you know, man is causing uh, harm to its own species. No other species uh, of animals, they're causing, uh, you know, that kind of harm to, to their species. And uh, we are putting a lot of energy, a lot of uh, efforts actually in controlling the man around the world. Uh, I was just looking into the data. I found that we are spending uh, somewhere around $14.6 trillion uh, in a year on, you know, uh, on, you know protecting, uh, protecting the countries uh, from, from, from the enemies, from the terrorist activities and all those things. And in case we calculate this amount in terms of per capita expenditure, it comes on, uh, you know, to be around $1,909 per person in a year. We are spending on you know, building this piece. And uh, this is a huge amount in countries like, you know, uh, Congo, Zimbabwe, many of the South Afri Af African countries. Per capita income is less than $1,909, which we are actually spending on promoting peace in the world. I was just going through the data, which, you know, actually is given by Institute of Economic and Peace, which published the Global Peace Index. What I found is they are publishing this index since 2007. Uh, during the last 12 years, the world peace level has gone down by 34, uh, 0.34, a score, by, by, by a score of 0.34. And uh, uh, nine out of the nine years, uh, you know, in nine years out of the 12 years during which they were, uh, you know, ranking the uh, world on peace, uh, peace parameter, uh, the, the level of peace has gone down. And uh, we know uh, 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 Mr. John Kalras, uh, Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, they were speaking about, you know, uh, governance and all those things in the beginning. And uh, the most important point they raised was about the education. Uh, it is very much right that unless until we focus on providing the right kind, kind of education to our people, uh, we'll not be able to promote the level of peace in the world. But what I look around, when we provide education to our kids, what we are doing, we are promoting, uh, you know, we are not, you know, making them good human beings. What we are doing is we are, you know, our education is focusing on in many of the countries on, you know, making these uh, students, uh, these kids in good, uh, you know, uh, score minting machines. We are not, you know, in many of the cases, uh, teaching ethic, uh, ethics and all, you know, the value of ethics and all those things to them. So we need to focus on to uh, onto this thing. We need to teach to our kids the importance of respecting other people's rights. And uh, I think in case uh, this education is done in that way, uh, and in case we are uh, you know, able to give the right kind of thinking to our kids, uh, it will be wonderful uh, contribution in building peace in the world. And uh, you know, ever since uh, uh, the inception of this mankind on, onto this earth, as I, said, as, I, as, you know, as I was saying in the beginning itself, uh, we, 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 we actually you know, uh, have been uh, uh, doing uh, no, uh, wrong things, the mankind causing damage to the other people on this planet. But what are, you know, people have done? Uh, a concept of religion uh, that has been put into place through religion, you know, uh, the societies, they are being controlled. The mindset of the people is, you know, being controlled and they are being, you know, uh, you know uh, convinced 
that uh, you know as per the religious requirements they should be friendly with the other people but what has happened the religious teachings over a period of time they are you know uh, they gone here why they are not you know uh, they have not remained effective then the second thing uh, is the you know law and you know uh, order system we have put in place number of rules and regulations and laws uh, for you know punishing those people who cause damage to the society or who cause damage to the human beings but even judicial system uh, in many of the cases they you know have gone weak in case we are able to ensure that our religious system our education system our you know judicial system they are effective they are efficient they are strong then i think we'll be able to promote peace in the world and one thing more important into this is the you know use of the energy of human beings into the right direction we need to see on to this that the people they get the right kind of employment opportunities their their energy is channelized into productive you know avenues and in case we are able to do that we will be able to you know promote the level of peace in the world so these are few points which i wanted to share with all of you though there are many points which i wanted to share but i feel there is a shortage of time uh with these words i would like to conclude my uh, you know uh, experience here and once again thanks a lot uh, to abhishek pandey ji and his entire team for this uh, great event thank you thanks a lot Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Ravi Indra, for your enlightening speech. And uh, now I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Dr. Thiraj. Dr. Thiraj, the session is yours. Please enlighten the session with your wonderful speech. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. It has been a great pleasure for me to be a part of this uh, symposium. I should be saying, and uh, particularly. listening to wonderful professionals i salute my guru my mentor dr jagdish gandhi who has initiated the concept of quality and peace in the world starting from city montessori school lucknow in a big way and uh, i take this opportunity to thank him for the wonderful dose he has been giving to the students and uh, particularly on ground of making peace a habit rather than an occasional occurrence and that is what is we believe in jay jagat the philosophy of jay jagat which talks about peace in the world and uh, keeping the track on that notion since i am uh, mentored by his uh, presence and his uh, collaboration i always take him as my guru for world peace education and i would like to read a little uh, about uh, the initiative being taken by city montessori school to the peace we have uh, in this particular um, organization we have world peace prayer which probably during my uh, working there for over 14 years i could encounter and feel the presence of that peace capsule among all the children and what they practice is about the world peace prayer which has been one of the routine of the assemblies so i believe all the heads of schools of the world all around who are watching us can integrate that as a part of a quality benchmark and i request all of you to visit the website of city montessori school and try to imbibe some of the wonderful practices if you want peace to practice as a notion also uh, one very good uh, Uh, initiative taken by the school is about the tableau which they have uh, every year uh, during uh, the showcase and uh, that tableau represents the quality initiatives of world peace and unity and that signature grounds the conduct and also the initiation of having a vision and mission for that particular school for me practice of world peace and prosperity has to be one of the life skills of the children in particular as a teacher trainer myself and a school auditor we look forward to initiating this concept everywhere all across and that works wonders let me tell you they all are the future builders of the world around and probably what all inventions and discoveries will take place tomorrow will be done by our students you know who are learning and 10 years 20 years from now so their minds need to be resourceful creative and innovative
with the capsule of coming together, working together. And here I would like to also introduce the concept of Kaizen, which is continuous development. And with the say that if you rest, you rust. So you need to continue working on the innovations, the discoveries, the action research by the teachers in the classroom about various topics which we are looking forward. We had a great challenge during the COVID times, but uh, when I always talk to the teachers, when I initiate their motivation and other things, they always come up to say that, yeah, I converted that challenge into the opportunity. And today I'm well versed with the power of technology. I've been talking, I've been sharing ideas, and now I club to practicing something new which has not been done ever before in my school because we are now competing with the world. So looking at that, COVID has given us, you know, lessons to learn and it has been a great rediscovery of delivery of education. Of course, peace and unity. Now we know that uh, we are um, giving vaccines to various countries and now in India also we have you know, covered a large number of people being vaccinated. So that is all the initiative of uh, peace as a practice. That is all from my end. Thank you very much and God bless everybody. Thank you, sir. Next, I invite uh, uh, Ms. Fadmat Munna, Director General, Maldives Media Council, Maldives, to share his views on uh, peace. Ma'am, over to you. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. First, disable participant screen. So I can share my screen right now. Yes, ma'am. Now you can share your screen. Is my slides visible? Perfectly, perfectly. It is visible. Thank you. Uh, warm greetings to all the participants. Just for the Society for Innovation Research, what we um, I'm so much grateful and thank you for the was the Charles Water Society Innovation and Research, and especially Dr. Albert for giving me this opportunity. I'm so honored to present my presentation here. Uh, well, we are talking about uh, peace building and I'll be focusing on how human resource management and women can build peace. Madam, can you play your presentation, please? Can you play it? Is it? Now can see it? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, Human resource management indicates human well-being and sustainable approaches in building peace building. Right? Research has shown that women are participating in contribution contributes peace negotiation and increase sustainable peace drastically in decision making. Uh, and also, it's um, uh, the sad thing is um, though our populations are half of of populations are women. We on, only few women are holding uh, government positions or the parliament positions. In um, so, just hold on. I think my letter is therefore government need to support and develop a framework or paradigm for the capacity building in women and gender equality and their representation and decision-making level as also. For the good governance and leadership, gender should have equal roles of opportunities involving liable wages. According to Georgetown Institute for Women, Peace and Security 2020 research says that they are more focusing on important roles that women plays in preventing conflicts and growth
think due to some uh, technical issue, uh, he is out of the room. Uh, maybe I can invite the next speaker. Maybe she can address after some time. Uh, it is time to invite the most uh, expected and uh, uh, the special guest of uh, today's uh, evening, uh, Edward Gonzalez, uh, NASA, USA. Because the entire country is talking about uh, mass landing. So today he is with us to share a lot of information regarding mass landing and uh, NASA's uh, uh, contribution in the field of space. And he is with uh, NASA for more than 20 years. He is very active in uh, space engineering. So on behalf of CWSIR, I wholeheartedly welcome the chief guest of uh, today's evening, uh, Mr. Edward. Sir, I request you to enlighten at the session with your uh, vast experience. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Dr. Pende, for, for inviting me uh, to this very prestigious event. Uh, I'm very humbled and very honored to be here. Uh, yes, a few days ago, uh, Mars Perseverance uh, landed on the Mars surface. It was very exciting times. Um, in years past, I worked at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory for over 17 years. Uh, I've worked at NASA headquarters and now I'm working at NASA Goddard, where some of the missions that they have are um, the James Webb Telescope um, and others like that, New Horizons. Uh, we study the sun, heliophysics, uh, but it was an exciting time for Mars Perseverance. Uh, it landed safely on Mars. It immediately sent images back. Uh, in the next week or so, it is going to launch a helicopter, which has never been done before. And that helicopter is going to have five successful missions. Uh, at first, it will just go up and down, and then it will try a variety of other things, getting a little more challenging as they are successful with the mission after mission. And it's only supposed to last about 30 days, 31 days, uh, the helicopter. But we look forward to getting back all of the amazing science. To talk to the point of our last speaker, which he was talking about human resources and women and others, I am the diversity, equity, and inclusion lead for NASA Goddard. And some of the things that I do is I encourage students from underserved, underrepresented communities, uh, people of color, uh, people from all walks of life, that if I can work for NASA, you can work for NASA too. It is an amazing place, but the aerospace industry, whether it's NASA, SpaceX, Blue Horizon, Blue Origin, Lockheed, Boeing, there's a place for everyone. It takes a village to run an aerospace industry. It takes a lot of people, a lot of dedicated people that are very passionate about what they do. And I know when I wake up in the morning, I'm very excited to go to work. I never wake up and think, I don't feel like doing this today. Every day I wanna do what I do. And I get to meet some beautiful, wonderful people doing these amazing things that you wouldn't dream was possible. When I was seven years old, my father brought me into the house. I was outside playing and he showed me Apollo 13. And as you know, on that mission, the astronauts had an anomaly and there was an explosion in space. Not only were they not gonna make it to the moon as that was their original mission, but they didn't have enough fuel or energy to come back to earth. But the flight director, Gene Kranz back then said, failure is not an option. We're going to bring them home and we're gonna bring them home safely. And boy, did he ever. The astronauts came back safely, just like he said he would do it. And some of the things that I believe in, if there is a problem, we're gonna learn from that problem. If we fall down, we're gonna get back up and we're going to figure out what the problem is and we're going to provide solutions. And that's what I think is the key to success. That even if you have an anomaly, and you don't have a good day, that the next day will be a better day. The next week will be a better day. The next year will be a better year. And I believe that. So with that, I'd like to turn the microphone back to you and just say thank you very much for having me. I'm very humbled and pleased to be here. And Dr. Pandey, again, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you, thank you, Edward, for your uh, time and uh, presence. Uh, next, I would like to welcome uh, 
Ismat Sarin, educationist from Bangladesh, to share his uh, views and experience to the forum. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Nagarajan, for inviting me and welcoming me to the Peace Summit. Um, so I would like to begin with um, my gratitude towards uh, Dr. Obishek Pandey for having me here uh, with uh, Charles Walter Society for Research and Innovation. So I really feel humbled to um, share to be sharing my views on it uh, on peace and I mean with such a such a wonderful and amazing audience and all the uh, distinguished speakers over here. Um, so uh, in my case, I think uh, peace, in my view, peace is something which we, uh, which we cannot just expect. Rather, we should um, welcome it with an open hand and open mind, and we should establish it. This is something that we cannot expect for, for the humanity to happen. Rather, we have to um, make it happen. So this is what I believe. This is what my uh, view about education and peace is, and a peace, uh, I mean, about peace. So whenever I talk about peace, I believe um, education comes on our way. And uh, without education, I mean, as an educationist, I always have believed that education is the only key towards establishing peace in this whole world and beyond. So um, education, in my view, is something that uh, makes us uh, uh, complete. And of course, education can only um, encourage creativity and a critical mind. So a critical mind always thinks for the betterment of the society and for the betterment of the whole world and uh, for the betterment of peace and establishment of peace around uh, all around us. So a critical mind can always um, be created if we actually, um, I mean, offer uh, proper education towards the mass people. Um, if, if we talk about, uh, I mean, establishing peace, obviously I believe the education that we need to promote the most is the holistic uh, education, because this is the only key towards um, establishing respect towards all the works of life and all the works of uh, um, knowledge uh, around us. So if we really, um, think of peace and uh, prosperity, uh, we need to think of establishing a holistic approach, a, a holistic approach, uh, starting from the very beginning of our education system. I mean, it's not like that we started uh, from the university level, but I think it, we should still, we, we should give it a go from the very beginning of like, when we start, uh, I mean, uh, imparting education towards our children. And um, it is something which is the mindset for, for, for our children that we can promote for this 21st century. Century. And um, a holistic approach can only ensure um, not only uh, respect towards others, rather it can make us think about the betterment of the society. It can think us make us think about the climate change issues and how we can come up with the problems, I um, mean, solution or to the problems. And it can also make us uh, ensure how we can. Um, uh, work towards the sustainable development of the whole world. And if we think of uh, the uh, UN uh, developmental goals, the sustainable developmental goals, obviously we know that peace is a part, a huge part of it and education is a part of it. But the only issue that is, that actually is coming nowadays in our view is how we can interlink all these educational, uh, uh, all these sustainable goals. And it's not only, um, I mean, peace, it's uh, peace which would be promoted by all the other sustainable goals which would be, uh, which should be achieved. and. Uh, so I think um, these all uh, sustainable goals that we are uh, we are talking about. I mean, when we're talking about United Nations uh, sustainable goals, we are not talking about only um, only peace, or we're not talking about um, the peace as a separate thing. I think rather we should interlink with uh, interlink it with other sustainable goals and make sure that we all are promoting peace through our individual goals. So as an educationist, I think since I'm working for education and the pedagogical development around the world and I also do research in education so I think it's 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 my it's my way of promoting peace and I think in my case this is the way I, I also work with green education so I think it's a way of looking into uh, uh, you know, uh, promoting peace. But rather than that, there are uh, lots of other options which we can actually come up with. And from, from you know, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, which, whichever work of life we are working on, it's something that we can, um, 
of peace is something that we can always promote through our own, um, uh, you know, um, own services towards the society. So it's not only professionally, rather than I think uh, it should be a goal. Peace is something which should be a goal for for us as a person, uh, as a, as an individual, as a as a professional, and also, uh, in, you know, in whichever part of the world we are be we belong to, whichever part of the world we are uh, we represent, um, it should be a prime option for us to uh, you know, make the world livable and to make the world a better place. Um, so yeah, I think um, there are, there are um, certain, uh, certainly of course, there are certainly different visions that, that we are actually uh, obviously listening to. And this Peace Summit is all about sharing and imparting our own views with others. So I think uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful way of uh, coming up with uh, newer ideas and newer views towards, um, you know, establishing peace and um, there I think there is nothing better than sharing and uh, you know obviously caring for each other and establishing peace so with that um, uh, command I would like to finish and I would like to thank everyone for giving uh, giving me a here uh, you know with this uh, with this uh, in this summit and thank you very much for for having me here thank you Sir, we can't hear you. Uh, Kindly unmute you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ismat Sadin, for your uh, wonderful session. Uh, within five minutes, you have shared a lot of information uh, regarding your views on uh, peace. Thank you so much on behalf of CWSIR. Thank Once you. Once again, Thank I extend my heartfelt thanks to you. Next, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Amina Omrain, University of Sfax, Indonesia. Professor Dr. Amina. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <clears throat> okay, good. Good evening from Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, this is, a, uh, I want to say thank you very much to the, to the uh, Cherry SR to inviting me here and having me in this uh, evening. So I want to say thank you to all of the participants, the keynote speaker that uh, attending in this uh, great and wonderful uh, World Peace uh, Summit. So can I share my screen? Yes, ma'am. OK. Yes, now you can <laughs> share your screen. Okay, thank you. This is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Motma Inna. You can call me Nina. I'm from uh, Indonesia. Uh, this is my a little bit uh, my profile, my organization, international and national organization. Well, about we are talking about the peace summit, and also because I am educator, my area, this is education. My topic today about creating a 21 century learning environment, innovative tools to facilitate student learning, collaboration, and creativity. But this is very important today, right now, about the uh, having a face uh, in the uh, virtual era right now in the global uh, competition uh, today. Well, I choose my topic today. This is because some of the phenomenon that actually happening today uh, during the COVID-19, we have a practice namely physical distancing and the social distancing. And also I divided uh, this is into the five uh, highlight challenge. And also this is uh, as the problem solving to our uh, or in uh, education, in our education right now. The five highlights here, I, uh, the first one is about uh, injected artificial intelligence in education. Our education, we are transformation today, right now, and we must be adapted with this a new condition today. And also integration, the ICT in the classroom, information, communication, and the technology in the classroom. This is very important. And also 
how to design our material, our classroom, our activity to make our student more fun, enjoyable, and happy uh, during learning and teaching uh, process. And also this is because we are in the 21 century skill. That's why we need to be how to uh, access the ICT, use of ICT, and uh, the student have ICT uh, competence. And also uh, the edutainment concept, I will share to you that uh, what I have doing in my uh, university, in my classroom, uh, when we are uh, in the challenge of the COVID-19. So to cover all of the problems, uh, I divided uh, our menu today that we are going to talking about the integration, integrating a 21 century skill into the teaching and learning process, teaching and learning with information, communication and technology, edu ed education and entertainment uh, together. Why well, this is very important. Well, this is uh, some of the uh, phenomenon. This is the data from the British Council that, uh, finding and tell us about the condition when we are must be integration uh, the technology in our learning and teaching process this is because we are lost our physical uh, classroom and then we are moving into the virtual uh, classroom we are practice uh, remote teaching and also uh, distance uh, distance learning and many more and this is a most, you can see here based on the data a remote teaching this is a new thing this is a new with uh, some of the uh, educator and uh, most of them, they don't have a good a feeling. They are anxiety. They are most uh, most of the the, the the educator right now. They are a get shock culture. How to integrate the ICT, the technology, the platform, or the so many tools or media in the uh, learning and teaching process or on education sector. Well, this is the education right now. Actually, education we are. Uh, uh, as uh, we, we are uh, just as educator, we are just giving guide for our uh, student. I mean that here the knowledge right now uh, in navigation, the knowledge is navigation. And this is the integrating 21 century skill into the teaching and learning. And we need to be uh, all of the teacher right now. We wanna should, they are, should have technological competence and the ability to help a student to use technology effectively. All the school or university should be required to integration uh, to integration the 21 century skill into learning, and also we need to be uh, get the policymaker to facilitate us with the infrastructure or ICT infrastructure. So, you know that in Indonesia, we are a developing country. We are a big country with uh, so many population, and also. 50% uh, in, in my country, we are in the blank spot. Blank spot, namely, I uh, mean here there is no internet connection and most of the uh, student and the teacher, they don't have uh, a memory device here, in internet connection. Why this is a 21 century skill a very important today to integrating uh, in this global, in this global, uh, in this global era, uh, because, sorry, this is for the educator. We need to be uh, integrated all of uh, all of them, and also the technology is uh, used. The technology as a, a teaching and learning a learning tool, and also educator right now indicate that incorporating 21 century skill this is into teaching that uh, have a positive impact. Uh, for the student, for the student in learning and, and teaching process, and they are more uh, have engagement in learning environment or online environment. And also, this is the five case a uh, 21 century skill and behavior that a teacher uh, need to think right now because uh, education. This is not only about the transfer knowledge in education to be having a more pitch in education. Uh, this is we need to be how to. Uh, improve the student mean here they are competent their skill behavior attitude character value and moral morality that's why uh, learning is not longer a solo activities we need to be how to 
uh, use namely uh, here a student center learning approach and also to uh, apply uh, to, uh, to apply or implementation in the classroom we need to be collaboration between the student and the teacher and also we must consideration about the uh, the, the the student condition and this is in indonesia my country condition uh, because most of the teacher and also the student they don't have uh, or they are they are mostly they are in low competent or low skill uh, how to use how to teach and how to train uh, by using the uh, technology so what should we do when most of the people the teacher or the student they don't have device or internet connection so it will be we are not free not enjoyable anymore and then we are not fun in our learning and teaching process in another side we must integrating the technology to facilitate the student with the 21 century skill what should we do this is the the the, the problem uh, in in our country and our ministry education and culture have policy about a freedom to learn freedom to learn uh, how to make our learning and teaching process our personal learning learning and teaching process will be more a simple interaction so this is the intersection between pedagogy and the technology in my country this is about the the system when the system this the system this is a chain also also we must uh, uh, know because we are uh, our our daily activity right now everything this is uh, handled by the internet of things so well this is the teaching and learning with uh, information and communication uh, technology this is the data from the world most used social platform uh, mostly we are used as uh, a social a social media Facebook, YouTube, and uh, WhatsApp, and also this is in Indonesia, in my con uh, in my country. Most of the student, most of most of the people, most of the people, we are use Google, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and 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 WhatsApp. And based on this the data, we can designing and development our material, and then redesign our curriculum based on the condition, and then. <laughs> use ICT how to integration the ICT in our classroom and also this is the 21 century uh, technology for 21 uh, century teacher because pedagogical this is not only actually this is not only about what is the the modern technology what is actually the good the good technology but this is come back again with our uh, student condition for example in my in my university uh, I use Zoom, but actually most of the students they uh, they are uh, don't have a good connection or uh, they don't have a good bandwidth or internet connection. That's why they are only familiar by using WhatsApp, by using uh, uh, Facebook, and then uh, by using YouTube. That's why we can designing our material and then also we can uh, integration and implementation uh, WhatsApp or Google Classroom and then for. Uh, and actually, uh, to get more peace and free uh, in education, you know that a 21 century skill and the technology have a good correlation. Because we are teach a human, we are not teach a machine or robot. And also how we can uh, facilitate our student with the, the higher of thinking skill related to the Bloom taxonomy. Uh, this is the pedagogical well that we can you you can use uh, in your activities in your classroom if you wanna to achieve a higher of thinking skill the student more have a critical thinking and also they have a problem uh, solving and this is the ICT use uh, in the outside of the school why this is very important because when we are in learning and teaching process in the virtual classroom this is not only about uh, between the student and the teacher, but this is actually uh, engage uh, the uh, the pa parents, administration, and also this is a harnessing educational data for uh, the uh, teaching. Well, the the next about the ICT use in the classroom, and then this is the context the contextual factor. You know that in ICT we can use um, educational gaming, e-learning, online uh, course uh, tutorial, uh, maybe 
right now we can use for example the platform like a MOOC and also open educational resources in learning and a training uh, platform there are many learning or training platform for example uh, from uh, Stanford <laughs> University uh, training uh, with the uh, Coursera uh, course well the ICT in learning and teaching uh, process why well, this is very important because uh, when we are integration in the classroom, this is actually mobile learning and then the student more have autonomy, self-direct and self-determined in the learning uh, uh, process. And also because our students, the, our student condition today, they are uh, in the generation C or Gen C. They, they are used the social media in, 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 in their uh, activities. Most of them are familiar with the social media. And that's, that's, that's why when you want to designing and then you are re redesign your curriculum, your syllabus, and also your activities in the classroom, you can uh, analyze what is actually your student need, what they want, and what, what, what they, uh, they lack. Doctor, uh, and this is social media. And this is, yeah, I can see the social media in, in the classroom. And also education Doctor, and entertainment. This is very important, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit. This is uh, education and entertainment together. In, uh, this is in one concept. Uh, most of the data that finding here by using a film, this is a very good in uh, in learning and teaching process. Well, this is uh, the the example of uh, my classroom when I use uh, film, designing film as a material in the classroom. I just wanna show to you. I break down. Uh, uh, to get uh, some of the phase here, interactional design only five here to achieve namely Bloom taxonomy. For example, this is you uh, playing the film. Uh, the, in the warm up category here, in the warm up phase, uh, you can uh, uh, ask your student to understanding and remember namely here, uh, while they are watching the movie. Uh, the student in interacts uh, to understand about the robot computer and technology. Be for example, this is the film about a computer and the technology. And when watching the movie, the students are hoping to remember the film chronology. This is still in lower thinking skill based on the Bloom taxonomy. And then in the presenting, you can ask your student to brainstorming and this is apply a uh, name and analyze. And then in the practice, the student will discuss the film. Uh, they will be creating the concept and also they will be retelling the video based on they watch it and then uh, create their uh, presentation and then record by using uh, TikTok, for example, uh, and then upload uh, in YouTube. And also the last the evaluation, the student will answer the question based on the material given. And also the last, uh, before I close in my presentation, there is no single approach that is effective to all. One should consider the available technologies and effective integration of information communication and technology in teaching and learning. This is not about uh, the latest and the most advanced technology, but come back again with your student uh, condition. And also we use technology this is to make our learning and teaching process to be more practical, effective and, and efficient. I think this is uh, enough for me. This is some of the, the example of my student a classroom that I uh, 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 share to you. Yeah, thank you for having me today. Thank you, doctor. You can stop sharing your screen. Uh, we are running short of time. Hence, I request uh, all the speakers to limit your speech uh, within five to seven minutes so that you know we can wind up the uh, first day session as per our schedule before uh, 9 p.m. today. Next, I would like to welcome Ms. Ram Sinekas, founder, World Women Conference and Awards, Startners TV USA, to enlighten the session. Good morning. Good morning from uh, Mexico. My name is Ragna Sinekas, and I said I'm the founder of World Women Conference and Awards and Untold Story Foundation. And thank you very much for this invitation. And I'm very happy to see that education has been considered as the center key of uh, of this uh, peace summit so um violence against women will only end when gender equality and the full empowerment of women will be a reality so how can we truly empower women and have the peace and security in their lives 
The problem is the power and the solution is to empower. To be empowered is to authentically really step into who we are as women, to embrace the feminine and question the very masculine world that we have helped to create. We need to take 100% responsibility for what is happening in our society instead of waiting someone else to fix it and commit to educating and inspiring future generations in a different way. To do that, we must first look at ourselves and our leadership and understand what it means to be authentic, who we are as leaders, what, what do we really see in ourselves and what do we really want to bring out to our world? Who do we want to be and what energy do we want to take out into this world? It is in this truth that will really truly impact and change our ecosystems because having the courage to bring our whole selves into our leadership has the power to change the world, especially in leadership for women. Empowerment is the can-to factor. It is going from I cannot to I can. That means creating a network of mentors <laughs> and supporters that provide the knowledge of how someone's life can be changed. You and me, all of us can do that. Whether in poor or rich countries, Afghanistan or the United States of America, millennial women are empowered through three main practices. Number one, self-awareness or awakening, understanding that you have the power to change your life. Number two, experience. Number three, key, education. Millennial women are pulling their empowerment muscles using two core tools, voice and choice. They are using their voices to speak up for themselves and more importantly, for those who cannot, our sisterhoods in other uh, side of the world. They also consciously and intentionally make different choices to make changes in their life. We know that education is the best tool to tackle harmful gender stereotypes, build uh, girls and young uh, women's confidence and equip them with the skills they need to learn in order to be safe. Greta Thunberg, Emma Gonzalez are just two young women from across the country using their voices to stand a more equal, sustainable and safer world. The transformative power of education for girls and their allies cannot be overstated. This is the key to ensure the peace and the security for girls and women. And it is a golden opportunity to tackle the harmful gender stereotypes that hold girls back and to provide children of all genders with the knowledge they need to make safe and empowered decisions about their own bodies and futures. In the past decade, we have seen major progress in levels of primary school enrollment and increased girls' access to education. But we must be bolder. Despite of our progress, our over 260 million children remain out of school worldwide. 130 million of whom are girls. Less than one in three girls in Sub-Sahara Africa and fewer than all in South Asia enrolled in secondary school. 15 million girls of primary school age will never learn to read or write. And even for those who do, success is challenging in a world in which girls' ambitions are routinely dismissed and undermined, not to mention their human rights. If we do not take action to finance education and target funds to address the barriers faced by uh, adolescent girls, over 400 <laughs> will not secure secondary level skills by 2030. So we must understand that the power and the potential of girls and women are at stake, not to mention their security and the peace. All world leaders know that investing in girls' education is both the morally right and smart thing to do. 
each additional year of schooling for a girl increases her future income an estimated 10 to 20 percent. And in West and Central Africa, the direct impact of 1% increase in girls reaching secondary education results in economic growth increase of 0.3%. Where girls are educated and empowered to learn, lead, decide, and thrive, whole nations the rewards. Calling on all nations to take action and gender, uh, gender transform, transformative education seeks to uh, challenge and eliminate gender biases and discrimination, not only in the classroom, but in society more broadly. It takes consideration girls and boys' specific needs, interests, and lived experience, and works towards equal educational outcomes for girls and boys. This includes equal access to education, particip uh, participation in classroom, learning uh, achievements, and competition. Beyond the basic education targeted investments are needed to improve the quality and the effectiveness of technical, vocational education and training for adolescent uh, girls and young women. Uh, and, and we need to understand that providing girls with the skills and capabilities for decent, uh, decent work and uh, therefore help to ensure a smooth transition into employment and entrepreneurship. We as leaders have the opportunity to transform the lives of girls and women around the world through a commitment of inclusive quality education for all children. What will you do as leader to ensure peace and security for girls and women and for our nations. Thank you very much for taking the, uh, bringing me this opportunity to talk about empowerment through the education, which is really truly the key to peace, security, uh, human rights. And if we educate our young girls and boys the same way, and when boys really have the idea what it really means to honor a woman, we're not going to have problems as we have with human rights, violence against women, and etc. So can we change it? Yes. Is it up to us? Yes. So I invite you to all tackle this problem and we can do it together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Robinson, Igas, for your uh, wonderful session. Next, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Asha Yusuf, Assistant Professor, AUC University, Egypt. I'm Hello. over here. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Yeah. Doctor, how are you? Can I make a share screen first? Yes, ma'am. You can share okay. the screen. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon uh, from uh, Egypt. Uh, and really, it's a great honor to be invited to such international conference. Um, today I'll talk about, or I choose to talk about uh, peace education and uh, transformative response to major social issues. Um, all of us know that uh, Mother uh, Teresa uh, has a wonderful uh, proverbs or idioms which said works of love or works of peace. So uh, let us first know the meaning or what is peace and first Peace is not just the absence of war, or it's the wholeness of life where every person can live with dignity. Peace also is the enhancement of life, and it is the general well-being of the individual uh, himself. But peace education, it's a holistic response as it's concerned with the issues and the problems related to educational fields in special. It seems to have an international dimension and historical roots. It also aims to develop international understanding and universal brotherhood. Today, I chose to uh, talk about um, a wonderful organization in Egypt, uh, which called CISV Egypt Programs. Uh, CISV is an international organization that educates and inspires actions for a more just and peaceful world. 
uh, founded over 16 years ago. Uh, also, CICV Egypt is a global movement dedicated to educating and inspiring action for peace. In CICV uh, Educational, uh, we or they believe that we can help change the world by providing love changing experiences and building friendship that lasts a lifetime. Uh, all CICV educational programs are uh, organized and run by a dedicated volunteers. Uh, they aim to help our participants of all ages to develop the skills they need to, to, uh, to take a lead and make a positive differences. Uh, at the heart of everything we do is a friendship and in line uh, with our uh, founding belief that peace is possible through friendship and mutual understanding. CICV uh, villages are international camps that inspire uh, from uh, 11 years old children to imagine a more just a peaceful world that children come together from many different countries to take part in a variety of educational, uh, cultural, and fun activities. A, a village creates a safe, fun setting in which um, your children or our children uh, will learn with children from around the world um, about each other, a uh, lives and culture, and how to communicate or operate or cooperate and love together. Uh, the village learning experiences and the friendship made will last uh, our children as a lifetime. CISV approaches to learning uh, to develop or to deliver their peace education in a way that is age appropriate and informal and experimental. Uh, experimental learning or learning by doing is simply a way of saying learning from direct experience or rather than from reading books or listening to lecture and etc. Uh, it's a characteristic of all CICV program uh, all over the world and activities uh, is fun first and effective. Uh, learning by doing combined with their focus on building friendship activities, lasting learning outcome that impact on their uh, participants emotionally and in their everyday uh, lives. Also, uh, <clears throat> CISV uh, Peace Education uh, provides us or provides children with the attitude, skills, and the knowledge to become agents of change locally and globally. Through peace education, CICV uh, seeks to educate and inspire our participants to become active global citizens uh, and working towards a more just a peaceful world. Peace education looks at local and global issues that are relevant to us all, recognizing that peace can mean much more than the absence of war. In fact, peace education encourages us to look at a wide range of issues and help us a better understanding of our own identity within the local and global community. Basic human rights, as well as forms of exploitation and injustice, a conflict and how they can cause, prevent it and resolve it, sustainable solution for environment and development issues also. Diversity of CISV to explore the identity of the individual and asks us to consider ourselves within our own and the wider community. Human rights within this organization considers how human rights affect every aspect of our lives and how violations can lie at the root of problems such as poverty, violence, and loneliness. Um, I have finished my uh, presentation and thanks a lot uh, for uh, being today in such an amazing uh, conference and international. Thanks a lot. Thank you, doctor. You can stop sharing your screen. Yes. Uh, next, I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Ms. Dina Constantoglou, Special Education Expert in EFL, Greece. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Greetings to the esteemed educators and academicians. 
allow me to express my gratitude for being here today. Um, it was an invitation that got me by surprise, which was very nice. Thank you very much for that. Uh, may I share my screen? Because I have a short presentation. Yes, ma'am, you can share. Thank you. Okay. Allow me to make this in presentation mode. Good, thank you. So today I'm going to discuss a bit about global identities, diversity, empathy, and humanism. Um, as Dr. Jeff Duncan, an associate professor um, at San Francisco State University said, schooling is the process by which you institutionalize people to accept their place in a society, uh, while education is the process through which you teach them to transform it was in 1948, uh, the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights, where the following uh, were um, actually consolidated legally. Education shall be di directed to the full development of the human personality and to the strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. It shall promote understanding, tolerance, friendship among all nations, racial, or religious groups and so further the activities for the maintenance of peace. So many years have gone by and different educational frameworks have actually attempted to instill values, enliven humanism and build responsible and empathetic citizens. You can see some of the frameworks here, such as the humanistic approach, the culturally relevant pedagogy, ethics education, civics education, values education, character education, human rights pedagogy, social education, inclusive education, peace education, and intercultural education, to name just a few, because there are more. Reasons uh, for why haven't educational approaches met with goal success so far vary, but the most simple yet prominent one is that no attainable global citizenship is very hard to teach. Global uh, community membership uh, denotes awareness of current circumstances and events globally. It demands critical reflection on the part of the students and it kindles understanding of what is happening around us in the world. It eventually leads to acceptance of diversity and assuming responsibility. Global citizenship actually lies in social participation. As Hank Rubin, founding director at Frederick Douglass Center for Collaborative Leadership said, we delude ourselves as educators and fail our civic function if we don't acknowledge that the purpose of the knowledge, skills and dispositions we communicate to our students is ultimately action. So to implement a curriculum the development of global identities, an educator shall transform and transcend personal ingrained beliefs and fears. He or she should denounce sterilized and polarized themes. He should or she make the syllabus relevant to learners because the themes do not have to be relevant only for the teacher. They have to be relevant to the student. The student must be able to understand them and relate. The educator needs to teach about inspiring figures, cultural events and difficult histories, which is something that has been uh, a theme that has been raised in these days difficult histories, like the Holocaust, for instance. Learners should be involved in questioning and moral reasoning. The cognitive limitations should be challenged and divergent thinking must be activated. Educators need to encourage learners self-identification and uh, encourage them to give ethical responses. It is our responsibility to conceptualize learning through meaningful experiences and paradigms. There's a threefold purpose uh, to delivering and embracing, uh, to delivering global citizenship lessons and actually embracing global identities. That is to promote taking a protective stance towards human rights. 
ensuring remembrance and commemoration of events so that mistakes won't happen again and expand empathetic capacities to create a more inclusive and peaceful world. Thank you. I think I was a short enough. <laughs> We cannot hear you probably. Yes, yeah, we're not able to hear you, sorry. Or is Thank, it you, just me? Thank you, Ms. Diana. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to invite Luliana Rasta, educator from Romania, to share his views on peace. May I invite uh, Luliana Rasta? Next, I would like uh, would like to invite uh, Rose Keel Swan, Soul Inspired Leadership from Singapore. Great, thank you. Thank you. Sir. And I thank I thank Dr. Pandy for inviting me to this to me uh, a great discussion on peace and various aspects of peace. Now I'll be brief, but I just wanted to make one point when it comes to peace. To me, world peace starts with you, the individual. It, it relies on you. And, that, and what I mean by that, when you're at peace with yourself, when you feel calm and contented and you have no emotional conflicts within yourself or with other people, then you're at peace with yourself. And once you achieve that, then you can start influencing other people to be, to be at peace. But if you have internal conflicts, it's very hard to demand world peace when you're conflicting internally yourself. The key is to be peace at peace with yourself. My, that's my clear message there, and what, the point I want to make. If you're, not an, if you're not at peace with yourself, you're very hard to influence other people to be at peace. And that's the point. So when things change inside you, then things can change around you. It doesn't work the other way. If it does, where you're, you're bending and weaving to watch the environment around you, that doesn't allow you to affect peace and create peace globally. It's probably the opposite. And things that like being in the present, not living in the past or wanting the future to come on quickly. It's being the present with yourself to be at peace. It's being in the present to influence others to be at peace. If everyone was at peace in the world with themselves, we would have no wars. We would have no wars. So you need to take control of your thoughts to be at peace because what you're trying to do is connect with your inner self, not your outer self, your brain. Because your brain starts telling you, starts comparing with what you do with, with other people, what they sh you should be doing, what others should be doing. The key is when you go within, inside you, deep inside you, that's what influences you to be at peace. So then you can become a giver of positive energy, not a taker of positive energy, or more or worse, negative energy. So the key is don't let the and like Steve Jobs once said, don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your own inner voice. The more you can control yourself and listen to within yourself, the more you'll be at peace and the happier life you had. And Wayne Dyer once said, peace can become a lens through which you see the world, be it, live it, radiate it out, because peace is an inside job. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Ms. Traska is invite... already there. Ms. Traska is entered in the room. So she must be called if she has not been called there. Pardon, sir? Uh, Ms. Traska. Ms. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Luliana Traska. Now I invite uh, Luliana Traska, educator from Romania. Is there in the panel? Unable to mute herself. Yes. Unmute, madam. 
Mr. Traska, just unmute yourself. We are not able to hear you. I think he has some audio problem. Yes, to unmute, sir. Unmute yourself, Tras Miss Traska. Just unmute yourself. Can you please? She's not explaining and not going to unmute herself. Okay, let's move ahead. Yeah. Yes. Ma'am, you can stop sharing your screen because you are not audible. You are not audible. You are not visible to other audience participants. So next, I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Ulvia Sanili, IDN, Professor Manisha Silal Bazar, University, Turkey. Dr. Ulvia Sanili. Dr. Prasad. Okay, next we'll move on to the next speaker, Professor Ijaz A. Huresi, President, Rector, Thailand Institute of Higher Studies, Pakistan. Professor Dr. Ijaz, over to you. Sir, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of uh, this August gathering, uh, intellectual from all over the world. Uh, wonderful effort by Charles Walter Society for Information, uh, Innovation and Research to, to create a platform to talk on uh, global peace uh, in, the, in the most difficult times on, on planet. So, uh, uh, President Pandey, thank you very much. Uh, you created this platform and then uh, brought all the global intellectuals at this, this forum. Uh, to put their efforts to, to make things better for everybody. Um, I think uh, uh, my perspective of talk would be from uh, the subcontinent's point of view. Uh, I think uh, what's needed most uh, in our region is to have a community like uh, European community, European Union, uh, a small block like we have SARC already, uh, but it has not... Uh, created an environment uh, of uh, peace and prosperity as it should have been. So I think uh, the more uh, uh, what's needed at this stage is intellectuals uh, from big two countries in the subcontinent, in fact, big three countries, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, intellectuals need to move forward and uh, set a space uh, so that uh, things can move into, into the direction. Uh, we had enough, whatever has happened. Uh, now is the time to, to, to create an environment of love, respect, care uh, for all of us in, in the region. Um, uh, President, uh, Dr. Gandhi very nicely said that uh, um, an environment of nuclear holocaust, uh, I think uh, uh, he has uh, said it very precisely and uh, we really need to look into it, that what we are getting out of this investment or the expense that we have, can we force our governments, can we convince our, our policymakers, now it is the time to switch to something else. Uh, if the taxpayers' money can go into other directions where we can all be better off, and as well as uh, global community will benefit from our efforts in the region. Uh, we all need to work on it. We all need to play our role uh, within our own institutions, within our cities, within our local communities. And I think uh, 
John's Walters need, uh, need to really uh, now work on it uh, uh, to have more uh, interaction uh, with civil society. Uh, the way it has come up in a very short time, uh, taken a space in, in big countries, uh, small countries, and has a big following. And I think it is the time now to, 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 to really uh, uh, work on, uh, on making it more uh, sustainable for all of us. Um, I, uh, I mean, when we talk about peace uh, and education, I mean, it, it is creating an environment for all of us, for others, as well as creating an env uh, environment where, where, where we protect the climate. And uh, at this point, when talking about climate, I must appreciate the uh, presidency, uh, president and, uh, and the team of uh, President Joe Biden joining the Paris Treaty back. It's a wonderful news for all of us. And I'm sure lots of good news are gonna come from, uh, from their leadership, uh, global leadership at this stage. So um, uh, from my side, uh, from, uh, from all of us in Pakistan, uh, we are looking forward to, to, to host uh, the next um, peace summit when things get better in, in the very near future uh, and uh, appreciate the efforts and uh, sincere approach of President Pandey, uh, the CWSIR chairman, Dr. Gandhi, and all the intellectual uh, who have uh, uh, decorated this environment of peace uh, for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Rijas uh, Qureshi. And next, I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Thona Safer, Professor of Information System, University of uh, Marvia Mon. Virginia, USA. Ma'am, yes. over to you. Good day, everyone. Uh, may I share my screen? I would just like to uh, thank everyone for the insights this morning. It's been uh, very invigorating. And um, I'm going to speak from my discipline, which is cybersecurity. And uh, this past summer, uh, I and my co author prepared a piece on teaching cyber warfare. And so I thought it's interesting to start with a definition actions by a nation state or international organization to attack and attempt to damage another nation's computers or information networks through activities such as computer viruses or denial of service attacks. Now we did um, a Google news search to see uh, the popularity of the term cyber warfare. And in July, 2020, um, that search yielded us over a quarter of a million hits. Then we switched the platform to scholar.google.com and searched for cyber warfare. And again, in July of 2020, uh, got over 100,000 hits on the term cyber warfare. Uh, these were from all kinds of journals and books and reputable publications, very interdisciplinary um, journals from technology and computing to foreign relations to uh, legal, um, a wide variety of scholars publishing on cyber warfare. Let us contrast that now to the concept of cyber peace. There is a definition from the International Telecommunications Union, which um, is an offshoot of the United Nations, that's a universal order of cyberspace built on a wholesome state of tranquility, the absence of disorder or disturbance and violence. So just a few weeks ago in preparation for this meeting today, this summit, uh, I did a new search on the term cyber peace on Google and I got 4,770 hits. 
keep in mind this prior slide indicated over a quarter of a million hits on the term cyber warfare. We switched over to scholar.google and got 873 academic articles on cyber peace, uh, the um, cyber warfare, which was over 100,000 hits. So how do we um, get over this imbalance? I would like to have seen more um, works being published on cyber peace than on cyber warfare. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm willing to collaborate with anyone on the call who wants to add to that 4,770 deficit um, the, to get us up to that same 100,000 hits on cyber peace. Uh, so one way to get there, though, uh, important to this group, is diplomacy. Um, we need some uh, global acceptance of terminologies in the cyberspace. Uh, we need international cooperation more than, um, than anything uh, since, I, since technology impacts every aspect of our life, from the educational opportunities some of you have mentioned, to the global business, to scientific advances. It's not happening uh, without it happening in a global con concept context. And um, it, everything is so interrelated these days. So we need some kind of international conceptual framework um, about cybersecurity. We need uh, cybersecurity components in curricula of every college uh, degree, uh, but particularly in uh, foreign relations and uh, global business kinds of degrees. And I believe all embassies need training on security awareness and how to handle these sensitive uh, issues and threats. So diplomatic staff needs to uh, include cybersecurity specialists. Um, those are my thoughts from the discipline of cybersecurity. I thank everybody for your um, time, and I'm happy to continue the conversation with um, anyone who uh, would like to. Thank you, Professor Dr. Donna Sefa, for your uh, wonderful presentation on peace. Uh, next, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Loti Gelsen, Educationist from Bhutan. Loti Gelsen. Mr. Loti. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, convey my uh, thanks to CWS uh, IR family for giving me this platform uh, to share my views and perspectives on world peace. Uh, before I share my views on the world peace, uh, I also would like to thank uh, all the uh, intellectuals in different fields for sharing your experiences and how you as expertise in your field could contribute to building peace in the world. Uh, I work as a teacher educator and I would like to share my uh, views on how I as a teacher educator could contribute to the world peace. Uh, before that, I would like to uh, quote the golden words of Mahatma Gandhi. He said, if we want to reach real peace in the world, we should start educating the children, I unquote. Well, 
it's very clear that we cannot have a peace, we cannot build peace in the world unless we educate the young kindling minds in the four walls of classroom with proper right and positive human values. So this is where now we all must, as the educator, I personally feel that we must now rethink on educating our young minds in 21st centuries through right human values. Now, how, now what should be the role then? What should be the role of the schools, the teachers and the curriculum? We cannot have the right astronauts, scientists, politicians, uh, business people without right human values. We talk of having uh, good governance. We talk about having a good uh, uh, relationship in every activities or in any daily, daily basis. This can only happen if we give right values to our children in the classroom. So uh, in my perspective, I feel that it's now that we must switch ourselves from focusing on the content, content teaching, then, you know, then we also must have to infuse some of the the values, the right human values, and we must embarrass those values in our curriculum. For instance, uh, I work as a, a teacher in high school. And uh, when I teach, this is my personal experience, when I teach a topic, I not only assume of teaching the content only, but with the content, I try to infuse some of the values, some of the right human values so that the child can learn the content, also embarrass the values. For example, you know, I, I teach social studies. I teach about the forest. I teach about the water. But what values can I teach when I teach those topic? So peace education, we talk about peace education. It can happen only if we give the right human values infused in curriculum and without that we cannot have a peace in the world and uh, some of our uh, colleagues have earlier said that peace within self is very important i think i i heard one of our uh, colleagues earlier said that the peace within is very important i think he was right and then that's because a young minds needs to know, respect, embarrass, and welcome the diversities. And we can have diversities built only in the classroom. So as a, as a teacher, educator, we all must rethink towards uh, teaching the young children in the classroom with positive human values. So with this, I would like to uh, hand over the floor back to the moderator. And thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Lodi. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Rania Lambo, Ministry of Education, Greece. Now over to you. Greetings from Greece, from Athens. Thank you very much for your kind invitation to be a part today of this uh, so meaningful and resourceful event. Uh, my name is Rania Lambu. I'm STEM instructor, global educator, and currently I'm working at the Greek Ministry of Education. Uh, may I share, uh, today we will explore the crucial role of peace education in the post-COVID era. May I share my presentation? Yes, yes. Um, 
So uh, the COVID pandemic has highlighted actually how interconnected, fragile, and complex the global socioeconomic system is. Because in a matter of weeks, global travel and trade systems collapsed, social norms changed radically, rights and liberties which have been taken for granted, such as the freedom of movement and association, were revoked, and social values uh, are reoriented. It also became apparent that the world lacks an effective approach to deal with its such crisis. So observing this crisis and its impact through a human right lens, uh, put a focus on how it is affecting people on the ground, particularly the most vulnerable among us, and the how, what can be done uh, about it now and in the long term. So guaranteeing human rights for everyone poses a challenge, challenge for every country around the world to a different degree. Uh, yet the impact of the crisis uh, in this is real. Unemployment and food insecurity have risen to unprecedented levels in many countries. Widespread closure of schools, reduction of care and protection services for children. Strategies to contain the virus are difficult for those without good quality safe housing. Uh, um, uh, we see that therefore the crisis uh, raises particular concerns for the marginalized, the most vulnerable in the society. Marginalization creates vulnerability and this could raise tension and could provoke uh, civil unrest. However, I strongly believe that COVID crisis could be also a great resetter uh, of, the, of economy, societies and education an opportunity to bring forward long awaited reforms for development. The pandemic has created actual opportunities for peace and can provide a pretext to adopt repressive measures for purposes unrelated to the pandemic. The stability and fear that the pandemic engenders is exacerbating existing human rights concerns, such as discrimination against certain groups, hate speech, xenophobia attacks, and forced return of uh, uh, refugees and migrants and sexual and gender biased violence, as well as limited access to sexual reproductive health and rights. So it is important here to um, refer to the distinction between positive and negative peace. Negative peace refers to the absence of violence. When, for example, a ceasefire is enacted, negative peace will ensue. It is negative, why? Because something undesirable stopped happening. For example, the violence stopped, the oppression ended. Positive peace is filled with positive content, such as restoration of relationships, the creation of social systems that serve the needs of the whole population and the constructive resolution of conflict. Peace does not mean, of course, the total absence of any conflict. It means the absence of violence in all forms and the unfolding of conflict in a constructive way. Peace therefore exists where people are interacting non-violently and are managing the conflict positively with respectful attention to the legitimate needs and interests of all concerned. So the pandemic uh, actually shift patterns of violence throughout the globe. While there has been a decline in some types of crime, battle deaths and riots due to lockdown measures, other areas such as domestic violence, self-harm and suicide are likely to have increased. There have been reports of substantially higher use also of suicide and mental health helplines as a result of the pandemic and social isolation. Here we see that towns that have invested in protecting economic and social rights are likely to be more resilient. Furthermore, countries that are um, most likely to recover quickly from the pandemic are those with strong performances and good relations with neighbors and sound business environment before the crisis. Therefore, the two factors that will assist countries in the post body recovery are high levels of positive peace, guaranteeing effective institutions, social cohesion and transparent representative governments and favorable economic conditions before the pandemic. These were the pillars most heavily affected by COVID. Uh, here we can see, it's very important here, the, the two uh, index, the index, the global peace index, the world's leading measure of global peacefulness, and also uh, the other under peace index that measures the attitudes, institutions, and structures that create and sustain peaceful societies. And here we can see that um, this, of course, uh, index, most of the indicators are likely to be negatively impacted by the COVID pandemic. There have been some um, Efforts throughout the pandemic, we see here the effort of UNESCO, the campaign, my COVID story campaign, which uh, provides a space for young women and men around the world to share their views, experiences and initiatives. COVID has given youth the opportunity to strengthen empathy, solidarity and resilience skills to combat COVID. Uh, here we can see some um, uh, testimonies, uh, for example, a high school student says that uh, misleading the biased information conspiracy theories have resulted in hatred and racism in China. And uh, 
what uh, it's important to see that we think this fame world peace education is of utmost importance education plays a crucial role in building defenses of peace in the minds of peoples it aims at the total development of the child it tries to inculcate higher uh, human and social values in the mind of child so a peace education is holistic why because it embraces the physical emotional intellectual social growth of children within a frame of deeply rooted in traditional human values it is based in a philosophy that teaches love, compassion, trust, and reverence for the human family uh, on our planet. And of course, it's also skill building. So the relationship between peace and sustainable development is important to achieve the objectives of social cohesion and living together and to move away from a culture or for war and peace. I am, uh, as Temis Trago said before, I'm the founder of uh, five international humanitarian uh, projects that are implemented mostly in Africa and India. And uh, this uh, project, um, um, through this project, I'm trying to alleviate, uh, I'm trying to make a negative peace look like more positive peace. Uh, why? Because uh, these projects are STEM, uh, STEM projects. As, as our world uh, becomes more deconnected, countries prioritizing STEM education and research will make significant advances in alleviating poverty and sustaining economic, cultural, and societal growth. It is vital also for developing, especially countries seeking to reduce the poverty levels to adopt new scientific research and technology. In doing so, these countries can improve their economy, healthcare system, and infrastructure. And I believe the role of STEM education here uh, is of significant importance, just as it is in our modern world. Thank you more. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. You have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Anya Lambo. Next, I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Wara Kamal, uh, professor from Thailand, to share his uh, views on peace. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Firstly, I would like to thank you uh, to invite me for today. Uh, actually, first of all, about, as you know, in Thailand, we have a lot of politics, a lot of problem in politics about our uh, prime minister, like not this year, but 10 years ago nowadays. That's why our, my country is still in developing country, you know? And what should I do for the peace and politics? Come belong together. So we need to build our student, my student, Thai student, to be sharing and ignoring to bullying. Because you know, Thai people go in with the bullying. Sometimes, like if you can speak English, but your accent is very Thai, so you cannot be like, oh, bullying is other Thai by Thai, not the other. So that's why the peace in Thailand is very necessary. And, you know, we have a lot of problem with uh, in the south of Thailand next to Malaysia, right? For the Muslim and Thai. Actually, I was live in uh, when I was young, I lived in uh, south of Thailand. So when I was young, I have a lot of Malay Malaysian friends, Muslim friends. But now, a day, Buddhist cannot live is about 5 or 10 percent. That's all. This one is a con conflict about the peace or so. So nowadays, as I'm a teacher, as, as I'm a lecturer, I always build build my students to be like the peaceful mind, like forgiveness, like touch each other, like share a love. Because you know, uh, about social, about our country, about my country, how properly um, we ca cannot develop because a lot of conflict about the politics, about the um, too many issues and the big problem is corruption. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna show you about this one for I would like to show share some slide that this one at the uh at the in the first class I always uh tell my student what 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 the 10 things that you uh you work good for each, 
for the other people or for your family, something like that. So uh, they they don't they don't have any idea, but they always ask like for the um we have a lot of conflict. I don't know how to say, but we have a lot of conflict about our new generations and my generation, my generation is me, generation X and baby broom. We have conflict a lot between of this group. But the piece in Thailand, what I would like to say for the shortest, uh, uh, because we have only five minutes. Okay, actually, uh, this one roadmap for Thailand, I just show you about the uh, creativity, innovation, and smart Thailand for Thailand 4.0. This one is our is my uh, is Thailand nation in next 20 years and for the piece I always uh, teach my student for about to empathy and sympathy to other share your your uh, material and who study together, you cannot learn by yourself, but you need to work at a team. Properly, when I was young, I always like the study alone, alone study, but now uh, all assignment, all the material thing, uh, I always give my student to work at a team and rotate the team member every week not the same team, something like that. And this one for motivate about the pitch in Thailand is about people, communication and working environments and management and the feedback. This all kind of category I always share to students to do every week and how to empathize and sympathize with the other and communication together, something like that. And actually, uh, the uh, pro positivity and happiness and will to work hard, good health and relationship work life balance. That's all the happy life. And if you, I always tell my student, told my student about like if you have a positive attitude. So if you have fulfill your heart already, one hundred percent in your heart, and you can share with the other and this one will be the piece and for about my politics and about new generation i think i don't want to touch it because it's very sensitive sensitive uh, issue in thailand seriously it's very very sensitive so but uh we can fix day by day for this issue you know it's about the um so society also, and it is about the living cost or something like that is a very sensitive issue. So that's all I would like to share for you. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank Namaste. you, Dr. Ora Kamal, for, for your uh, quick and uh, crisp presentation on this. Yes. Next, I just, like yes, to, thank you. Uh, uh, next, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Ansu Anand. Uh, entrepreneur uh, India. Ma'am, over to you. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, for this uh, session on peace, uh, on world peace. And um, I'm running a business advisory firm based in New Delhi. And uh, we work, uh, we are increasing our focus towards uh, sustainable business development solutions. Uh, since climate change uh, mitigation and ad adaptation, I think is one of the most crucial topics that we should be discussing. Um, in fact, um, I think climate change is the new pandemic that uh, we should be talking about. It's 2021, uh, we are still concerned and in many parts of the world dealing with the impact of COVID-19, but it is high time that we actually start uh, putting the same serious, uh, seriousness and focus towards uh, climate change uh, related topics. And um, in, in terms of world peace 
and uh, security point of view, um, I think, um, I mean, the, the, the major effect is going to be towards the availability of resources, uh, uh, you know, which has been uh, quite evident uh, recently with, uh, uh, you know, the news of uh, lack of clean air in most of the cities around the world. Uh, there is um, a very uh, fast depletion of clean water, clean ground water uh, in most of the cities around the world. And uh, this is, th these issues will uh, increase exponentially. Uh, you know, there is uh, actually no way going back with the global warming that's happening. So uh, I think now the focus has to be how do we mitigate and how do we adapt to the changes that uh, that is already happening. And um, this affects, overall, this affects the population dynamics around the world. Uh, you know, our generation has been, uh, uh, you know, mostly centered around, uh, you know, the, the uh, structure of how uh, industrial revolution shaped up the world, uh, you know, where the concentration was towards the cities, uh, you know, for the population to migrate and find, uh, you know, better job opportunities. But now, uh, since climate change has become such a big threat, I think that's going to uh, create a lot of, uh, uh, in a way, chaos and havoc in terms of, uh, you know, finding uh, the basic necessities to be fulfilled and uh, to be easily available by uh, people at large. And this way is going to put a strain on the societal institutions, you know, who are working towards, uh, you know, building a better world and, uh, you know, working towards social impact uh, related uh, issues. And uh, so overall, um, I can see, um, you know, there's going to be a, huge, a big impact on the socio-economic and political stability as well. Uh, you know, all just because of the climate change that is already happening. So in terms of numbers, there are 971 million people that are uh, living in the areas which have uh, high or very high exposure to uh, climate change uh, hazards globally. And out of which 41%, which is more than 400 million people are in countries which have very low levels of peacefulness. And um, in, out of this uh, Asia Pacific region houses twice num the number of people as many people uh, in rest of the regions. And South Asia in particular has the highest risk to nat natural hazards and uh, it has the second lowest coping capacity of all the regions because we are still in the, in the process of, you know, uh, of developing the economy and, you know, putting, the, uh, putting a robust financial structure uh, in most of the countries in this region. So, um, you know, I think the climate, as and when the climate hazards, you know, keep increasing, and most of them uh, are the ones which are uh, which come unannounced and is beyond human control. So this is going to put a, a lot of pressure in the gov governance and in the financial system. Um, and apart from that, sub-Saharan African region has a risk of. Uh, has a climate related uh, risk as well, which uh, may even uh, result in a violent outbreak and uh, which could put about more than 122 million people at risk. So in 2017, uh, there has been about 18.8 million people who were estimated to be displaced due to uh, natural disasters globally. And uh, this has um, uh, this has brought in a new uh, wave of uh, uh, you know displaced people who are called uh, climate uh, refugees. And uh, apart from them, it just puts a, a very big strain on the fragile communities around the world. Um, so I would like to just uh, highlight that. Um, 
I think besides um, um, uh, taking uh, initiatives in the political stability and uh, the overall uh, defense of countries, peace has to be uh, achieved by understanding the importance of climate change, uh, adaptation and mitigation at every level. At, uh, you know, uh, I think there, there needs to be a lot of data that needs to be generated by the researchers like uh, we have over here from all around the world. And, uh, you know, the right research numbers are, um, that can be published in a more, um, I think, updated uh, way and, and in a more um, precise form is going to empower rest of the uh, sectors like the business communities or the politicians to take uh, to uh, you know bring about change based on that data so um, i think i would i'd like to use this platform to um, highlight all the researchers uh, on this platform from all over the world to uh, please put focus towards uh, bringing out substantial data around climate change so that this can be published and uh, studied by rest of the stakeholders uh, in the system. Um, I think from the business point of view, um, I see a lot of uh, requirement and inclination towards uh, ESG, what we call, uh, which is environment and sustainability related groups are getting a lot of attention from the investors, from politicians, there are, uh, you know, future city models that, uh, you know, the countries are working on. Uh, but unless we have the right data to uh, start the work, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to actually bring about the right action. And, um, and climate change is, is going to be so crucial that uh, it may be, I mean, uh, you know, actually the impact if it is properly studied, is probably worse than any other pandemic that uh, you know our civilization has faced. But um, unfortunately, it is not very well talked, studied, or uh, assessed on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, so yes, I would like just like to urge uh, everyone here to help us, uh, you know, uh, highlight climate change uh, to maintain peace in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Anshu, for, uh, Anand, for your uh, speech on uh, climate change and a lot of data, as you have uh, mentioned. So thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Next, I would like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Dr. Clarence Peter, uh, Board of Directors, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. Sir, I request you to share your uh, views on uh, uh, World Peace Summit. Over to Dr. Clarence Peter. Dr. Uh, Clarence. I think Sar is not there in the panel. Yeah, I think I think he's exited. Yes, yes. Uh, I have called all the uh, resource person as per the schedule uh, we have planned. Anybody is still waiting? Uh, join later. Um, I think I have seen uh, Luliana Tresca uh, in the panel. Um, can you able to unmute yourself? She has some technical glitch. She yeah. won't be able to ask. Uh, one Fatima is there. She wanted to explain something on the piece. Actually, she was unable to explain that time because of her network glitch. Now she's available. Dr. Ulvia Sanilia Aiden. Uh, yes. Doctor, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah, fine. Hello. Hello. Hello from Hello. Turkey. 
Uh, first of all, I want uh, to thank to all participants for this special session and for invitation me also. Uh, today we will uh, or we are talking about peace. It's one of the vulnerable and more desirable issues in the world. And I think all of us uh, every time uh, talk about uh, the peace more than other issues. So uh, we must say that uh, we usually talk too much about that subject, what we miss more. So in these terms, peace, democracy, human rights, a clean environment, uh, fair distribution of income, just these are the subjects that we uh, miss uh, more than other uh, daily issues. So today, our planet uh, where we live is going through one of the most difficult and challenged uh, transformations. And there are too many threats around us, around, around humanity. Maybe years before, we told about uh, wars, uh, we told about the uh, interest stakes of nation states. However, today, uh, a situation a little bit changed and more complicated because uh, the trades uh, are not only from other countries or other societies, other nation states, but uh, the nature itself, our world itself, uh, also uh, treating us in terms of climate change, in terms of uh, environment issues, and in terms of pandemic. So uh, I think uh, in this, uh, during these different times, we need peace more than before, because uh, pandemic showed us that there is no uh, any uh, discrimination. Uh, when such a big threat uh, pose for, uh, is posing for humanity. So uh, I think all of us, all each individual or each society, each nation state is not uh, able to uh, fight against the effects, against the influences of pandemic. So uh, the second option is here to trans uh, to evaluate to uh, accept uh, the pandemic in positive way maybe uh, you are surprising uh, how can be pandemic uh, evaluated in positive way but i think uh, uh, yes i agree uh, the pandemic is seen as a global crisis it's really a global crisis there is no any uh, mm, discrimination, as I said, between uh, welfare people, poor people, uh, between geographies, countries, but pandemic can also be transformed into a global opportunity for each of us, because the fight against the pandemic cannot be solved, cannot be done by putting the interest uh, only one state uh, or only uh, with the attempts of uh, any society. So uh, maybe this pandemic can be helpful uh, uh, to create uh, a culture, a common culture uh, in terms of uh, sustainable peace. Because uh, as I said, as my uh, colleague uh, pointed um, before me, uh, sustainable development, uh, also climate change, climate mitigation, all these uh, in, in migration also, also refugee crisis. Uh, so um, all these issues uh, are the great uh, traits for us, for the human security, for the peace and welfare. In these terms, uh, we must reach a solution uh, by addressing everything which uh, results in migration, environmental pollution, racism, human rights problems, uh, the gap in income distribution, and of course, peace and injustice. I wish uh, success uh, for all of you in these uh, works. Uh, thank you once more for this special invitation.
Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Clarence uh, Peter, uh, Board of Director, Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. Sir, I request you to uh, share your views on uh, World Peace Summit. Thank you, uh, Nagarajan, for uh, this uh, beautiful invitation. Before I start, I give my regards to Dr. Abhishek Pandey, who has taken this initiative in this time of violence throughout the globe. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Perfectly. Yeah. So, thanking Dr. Abhishek Pandey at this young age of 28, who realized the importance of this topic of peace when the whole world is in turmoil. You talk about terrorism and you talk about what not. When we talk about peace, being from the English department, I know well the spelling of peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E. But where are we leading to? Where are we heading to? We are heading to another piece. P-I-E-C-E. -E. Anyone in between, Nagarajan? Anyone wants to speak in between? No, no, no. You can continue, sir. You can continue. Okay. So what I meant was the, the difference in spelling of peace and we are going running into pieces. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank Brahma, whatever name we call, that our country, India, is still better as far as peace is concerned. Today, we don't need political leaders. We need peace leaders. And when we say peace leaders, the first people on priority basis, it could be the educators, the teachers. Peace directly, when we talk about peace, we mean directly the mindset. Now, when we talk about definition of light, I don't know if someone, if someone can help me to define light. We usually define light by saying where there is no darkness. Similarly, peace could be defined where there is no violence. And it is our educational institutions, we as educators, we as agents for social change, we should inject social emotional and ethical values in our thoughts, in our students. Whatever has happened has happened in the past. The future generation, the X generation is our students. They are, they are those soft clays. We can mold them. Teachers Educators can build peace by calling for one important thing of being one gender, one region, one linguistic, one religion. All religion, we, in, in all religion we say there is one God, but our paths are different. different. And when we talk about peace, even in our families, we should have peace, then our neighborhood will have, then our state, our city will have, our country will have, and that is how it multiplies, the induction effect. When we talk about peace, when I said about family, communication is directly related to peace, directly, directly. How do we communicate things to our elders and to our youngsters? 
what is the way we interact with our parents to our neighborhood parents to their children and vice versa above all i would like to end with these few words after having listen to all i would like to end by saying with folded hands a request to our media which is another teacher a very 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 active teacher peace teacher a peace leader to stop all that stop it today these discussions going on on the screen the next generation is getting a very 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 i won't say bad but awkward impression about the coming days about peace we talk about peace on table and everything excuse me everything is nullified by the media we are talking about hindu we are talking about hindu vis 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 muslims we are talking about uh, the ireland christians versus this christian the we are talking about shias versus sunnis what rubbish muslims are muslims christians are christians hindus are hindus we are all humanity let us stop all that if we through this peace summit at the closing ceremony with a refolded hand request if i can make is please convey to the media people to stop all this excuse me for using the word bullshit this discussion going on on the screen we you call it for trp or you call it for any anything but please please and please thank you thank you sir thank you so much uh i request all the participants to switch on your video so that you know i can capture the virtual group photo i request all the participants to switch on your video for a moment before officially closing the uh, first session of world the peace summit i request all the participants to switch on your video open camera yeah please <laughs> open camera and smile yeah quickly thank you thank you so much uh, thank you nagarajan yes sir uh, it is it is my responsibility to give concluding remark on uh, first session of uh, world peace summit i would start my concluding remarks with a simple message thank you thank you so much for all of you for joining today whether you are from abroad or uh, you are already here in india whether you are participated directly or uh, you worked behind the scenes you have all shown your commitment to sustaining peace and because of you this is the first session of virtual grand summit was a success i hope you all have enjoyed yourself today and learned something what an exciting day this has been i think uh, we have over 33 uh, talented speakers from different countries uh, uh, that is remarkable after listening to so many of your views and uh, seeing examples of uh, your work you have reminded me that talented people simply are not as tied on by conventional thinking as the rest of us because you see problems differently you tend to arrive at different solution that is such an incredible and uh, under uh, valued resource let's make no mistake it will be a long road ahead uh, this is a struggle across continents cultures and generations a struggle for the future you will not only inherit but help build let's work toward a future of peace tolerance and opportunity that is worthy of the hard work creativity and leadership we have seen here today thank you all again for being here 
and i encourage you all to stay connected with each other on the road ahead we'll meet again tomorrow at 6 pm for the second day session of world peace summit 2021 with the different uh, panelists until then take care good night bye bye good night bye good night from me bye 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 bye. Good night. See you, everyone, tomorrow. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Abhishek. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Doctor Abhishek. Bye bye. I, 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 to talk on peace which is the ultimate goal for human life as it is written in our veda that we we, we advocate the like telling you know om rau shanti zung shanti antariksh brahm shanti rapah sthiro sadhayah shanti navagraha shanti brihaspatayah shanti we pray peacefulness of entire world Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, President Pandey. Have a good one. So let me close the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>